So let's do an example where we actually apply the mean value theorem um, and we find C. Um, so our function is just the reciprocal function 1 over x and we're going to find all values of C at which our function satisfies the mean value theorem. If you recall, this is just a reciprocal function. Um, it ha the graph looks like this. It looks uh, it's like a hyperbola. Um, it's only discontinuous at x equals 0. That's the only value that's not in the domain of the function. Um, so this function um, is continuous on the interval, closed interval 1, 3, OK? And it is differentiable on the open interval 1, 3, okay? And we know that the der derivative of this function, right, this is, uh, can be written as x to the negative 1. So we know that the derivative is negative x to the negative 2 using the power rule, or negative 1 over x squared. This is defined for all real numbers except for 0. Um, and so this function is differentiable on 1, 3. So this implies that uh, f of x satisfies the hypotheses of the mean value theorem. Okay, and what that tells us is that there, there must exist okay, and I'm going to just use this notation, there exists, okay, so there must exist um, some number c that is an element or that lives in the open interval, um, sorry, in this case, that would be 1, 3, such that f prime of c is equal to, in this case, we have f of 3 minus f of 1, over 3 minus 1. So the mean value theorem tells me that this C must exist. So our job is to actually find all the values C um, that satisfy this condition, meaning that the slope of the tangent line at C is equal to the slope of the secant line. So let me calculate here, uh, well, what does C satisfy? Uh, f of 3 minus f of 1, let me just take a look at my function. f of 3 is just 1 over 3, and f of 1 is just 1 over 1, and 3 minus 1 is 2. So on the right-hand side of this equation, I have uh, 1 third minus 1 over 2, so that is negative two-thirds uh, divided by two, which is just equal to negative two-thirds times one-half, which is negative one-third. Okay, so that's what this uh, right-hand side is saying, that, okay, um, the t slope of the secant line is negative one-third, so that's going to be some line that you see over here, right? And we want to know, okay, and then there must exist C such that the derivative at C is equal to negative one-third. So let me just write down, well, what is F prime of C? Uh, so we calculated F prime over here. So F prime of C is going to be, uh, can be represented as negative one over C squared. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this down here. So we have to find C such that negative 1 over c squared is equal to negative 1 third. So that's the equation that I'm going to have to solve. So find c such that negative 1 over c squared is equal to negative 1 third. So such that the slope of the secant line is equal to the derivative at c. So let's just go ahead and solve this. Um, so this is the same as saying 1 over c squared is equal to 1 third. I just multiply both sides by negative 1. And this is the same as saying that 3 is equal to c squared. 
And this is the same as saying that C is equal to positive or negative root 3. Um, and we actually don't need the negative root because we're looking at the interval uh, 1, 3. Okay, So only looking for C that are inside of this interval. Uh, so that tells me um, finally what I have is uh, if C is equal to positive root 3, then this condition that the derivative at C should be equal to the slope of the secant line. In other words, the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the secant line. And let's verify that that's true um, by taking a look at the graph of this function. So the first thing is let's take a look at the function. This is the function y equal 1 over x. And the, inter the interval that we're interested in um, is between x equal 1 and x equal 3. So I'm just going to zoom in so you can take have a much closer look at this interval. Um, so here are the two points on the graph. Okay. And let's take a look at the secant line that goes through those two points. Okay, so there's my secant line, and you can see that the slope um, is negative one third. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I am going to graph the tangent line. So the tangent line that is a tangent line that is parallel to this line. You can see it right now. It's the red line, and this tangent line occurs at exactly right around here, um, and that is root 3. So I'm just going to uh, uh, mark off where root 3 is, right where this uh, blue line is. That is where x is equal to root 3. So that is our c value. When c is equal to root 3, you can see that my curve has a tangent line, okay, and that's this line right here, um, that is parallel to the secant line, which is right here. 